What's up, guys? I'm Dr. SampleKings.com. And of course, this is our YouTube page, right? And I want to thank a lot of guys for subscribing. But you know, we don't have enough, generally because 95% of the people who view, and we get this sort of uh, calculation down from YouTube about what's going on. And so 95% don't actually subscribe. Now, a lot of people actually view, though. We have tons of views. Like, for example, here's my MPC X video, 167,000 views. Uh, Live 2, 134,000. Uh, and PC1, 119,000 views on that video. Also, we've got Roland, of course. We've got the old NPCs. Our problem here is that we need you to subscribe to help us grow and keep going here inside of YouTube. Otherwise, it's not worth it. We're going to probably start selling videos more, and that'd probably be an easy way to do it, but I prefer to actually do videos in YouTube. Now, this is what's new in Logic Pro. we got this session player. It's like an AI thing here. we got a new bass player. They've got a keyboard player, and it joins with the drummer that they have inside of Logic Pro and making it easier to create professional produced parts that respond instantly to my feedback and follow my song. So it's an AI type session player, like someone who's playing with you. So I gotta see what they got going on here. See how good it really is. Then we got Chroma Glow. Now this will apply this root saturation to any track with an advanced plug-in module from some of the world's most sought-after audio professional gear. So we're going to check this out too. And this also requires M1. Now M1, M2, M3, M4, this is all going to help out to get everything going in the right direction because it's going to require that compute power. Next we have Stem Splitter. Now, stem splitters are a big thing now in MPC. They call it MPC stem separation, where they get four actual parts from one song, we'll say. But you've got to have the M1 chip. So this is important. And this means that it's going to use a lot of power in order to create these stems. Now I have Logic Pro 11. I'm going to go right here. We're going to go to About Logic Pro. I'm on a MacBook Pro with an M1 chip, M1 Max, that is. And of course, you see here it says, 11.00, it's a cool place to be, the beginning of the 11 series. Let's go over this whole idea, let's start stemming up, stop talking. I got this selected right here, we'll go to functions right here, right, this is functions. I get the functions, I go right here where it says stem splitter. I'll grab the splitter and we'll see here it says vocals, drums, bass, other. So I can just get this or turn those off, or I don't want the drums, you know, whatever. But in this case, let's get everything going on. This is the Funkadelic right here. Boom, got it right there, that's cool. That was pretty quick. That's kind of cool right there, I like that a lot. But I want to hear how these things sound separate, right? So I'm gonna come in here, let's forget the vocals, I'm not caring about that. Let's start out with the drums. The basic function of any music is to have a beat. Got some other sounds in there from, I don't know where, but the solid, the drums are right there. Let's go to the bass line. Oh, good. Let's hear this. Turn that off, let's hear this other part here. of the keyboards tied to it. Not bad. It's kind of low some of these sounds that you can see here. The keyboard and the bass and the dominant area of course is the drums and the vocals right here. Let's hear the vocals too, get an idea of what's going on here. Okay, we know that whole thing with the vocals. No big deal. It's just vocals there and that sounds pretty good. Just how the record goes. Now what I want to do now is look at these parts inside of Logic Pro in the mix section. I'll press X now and we'll see here we have this one track here selected called Funkadelic, which I have right here, right? And then when I make the stems, I select stems, it makes four other parts. But check this out. If I come to here, the drums are going to play. I'll call it here the bass plays, right? Now, this all control, the order that is controlled by the main output of the sample itself. So this is like an aux. 
an auxiliary track where these sounds are sent to right here to this bus, which is bus one, we'll say, right? And so there are bus right there, and you see, bus, 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 they go in, in, dip. It's pretty good, it's pretty simple stuff here. And this is a bus here, so they're all heading right there. And I put these three on right here. I get my levels if I want. Now it sounds like their stems. Now on this next stem separation idea, I want to get something that I never had the full drums to. Okay, so you know that one, right? I know you know that one right there, right? So I'm gonna come in here and stem separate this bad boy. So I'm gonna come in here, that's it right there, that's good. I get to the function, I'm gonna go here to stem splitter right there, and I just really want everything separated here. I'll press do it, and it's done here for this track right here. So let's, let's pull this mixer down for one, let's get rid of it too for another, and now we got it right here, and I wanna get this drum track right here, right? Let's play this back. Not bad. That's not bad. I like that. Now I'll play it back to stem here again. So I want to get the drums heavier. I'm going to pull these vocals out for one. And uh, let's get the drums. See, I'm going to double click here for drums. And now I can see this uh, sample right here. It's not very loud. I prefer to have it louder. I'll come here to function. And what I want to do next is normalize this region gain. I'll come to here, and this is a pretty good, there's one below, one dB below zero. I'll apply that, and now this track has been funky. Let's go back here, and go to here, play back. That's not bad, I like that totally. But I might want to do more, so I'm going to press X here, and what you can do also here inside of Logic Pro is, oh, here we go, great. I could add some effects. So I'll come to here. I'm going to pull up an EQ here. I'm going to get an EQ for some drums. I'll go to here, and I'm going to probably sort of refresh these drums out somewhat or make them punchier in a sense. Let's try to refresh them a little bit. Not bad. See if they're too loud, and we're starting here. We'll pull this down in here, of course. My drums are right here. Good. Okay, so now I might want to try some stuff. There's a new thing here they gave us, which is this under, let's see, it's under distortion, I believe. Distortion right here. You see, this is chroma glow, right? But you'll, if I don't see it that way, you come here to it, it says, uh, Distortion, and you'll see it here, chroma glow, right? So this is a distortion type effect, and you can see chroma glow. So I come in chroma glow, and I can apply this to sort of add some saturation to the track, uh, to those drums or whatever I want to add to them. I come into drums, actually. Here we go to drums, and I can get heavy, buzzy. As you can see here, there's a bunch of different setups for it, and they're mostly based on some sort of distortion type effect. So you see it's uh, chunky and thick. Let's try this one. That's pretty noisy and really out there. And this is a brand new effect we're checking out here. And I've checked out a few things already. I want to see what we got here in the place. This is our drum room. I can go full effect. That's without it. I'm sorry, 50%, 60% is pretty good too. Higher. Okay, now, next, a soft press, nope, here's a hard press, and I can squeeze, I can adjust analog preamp, that's not bad, not so much noise, magnetic, and get more of that hi-hat sound in there, modern tube, and we have the retro tube. A little much of a dark, a little more of a darker sound. And these are the various 
settings you have here. And I can do a mix of wet and dry right here. I can have a level output here. So I do, you see what happened here? It's too loud, right? Let's pull it back up. Level in, let's level out. That's pretty good. Not bad. So the parameters you can mess with also is low cut, it's high cut. Let's see what the lows are coming in here. Turn the lows off. Right? So you get the idea. You can mess with it at home, of course, but this works for everything. You know, we got bass here, we got guitar, keys, master, bus, vocals. It's kind of cool. I haven't used it fully, but I do like some of the parameters in here, and I will be using this to get a better idea. I think I might do a whole video on how to use some, some parts, but I do like it a lot. So I'm applying it right here. So I will use the stems, but still try to bring out the real flavor that's there inside the track itself. Like for example, here's a bass. It might be too low. I'll come here, I'll, I'll press, let's see, uh, this solo button. You can hear it's in the track because it's in the bottom, but its presence is there because it's in the bass frequency. So what I want to probably do here is, with I did before, I'll double tap here on that region i'll go to here to function and i'm going to select uh normalize region gain again i'll come to here only one region is going to normalize you can see that peak we're going to go minus one below zero i'll apply it here now i'm gonna play this back So see, normalizing does help somewhat. I can also bring it down now. In the mix, I want the drums to dominate. So you can do what you need to do in the track to make it work. And so stems inside of Logic Pro works really good. I like it a lot, actually, after I did this guitar thing I did, which I can't actually play for you because it was Eddie Van Halen guitar, and that, of course, was copyright protected. But sometimes you can get a really great track from a record and get a one track you can keep. Like maybe get all the guitars you like from different records and keep a collection of guitars you can have in your uh, sample collection, which is always cool to have. But I do approve of this Logic Pro stem splitter, which is right here, and it's easy to use.